Hello, I'm Stefan Kreber, I'm the project leader for LexD, and in this first video of 2022, I'm going to be looking at authentication in LexD, and specifically in this one, remote authentication using an external authentication provider. For anyone who's been using LexD um, remotely or as part of a cluster, you've probably been um, interacting with LexD's TLS-based authentication mechanism, uh, which kind of looks like SSH, where you get like a fingerprint prompt and then uh, your user's public key is used to perform authentication against the server. There's a trust store with all the keys that are trusted. It yeah, works in much the same way as SSH. That's kind of what we base it on. That works pretty well. Uh, it's pretty flexible. It now even supports uh, pretty complex things like restricting to specific projects and, and some amount of access control, which is pretty good. Uh, but if you're in an environment with an existing authentication mechanism, whether it's you know an Active Directory or some other kind of um, authentication mechanism, it might be useful to integrate with that instead. And Legacy has supported that for quite a while now, and that's what we're going to be going over in this video. So specifically, I'm talking about Candid, uh, which is here in our documentation, so Candid-based authentication. It it allows delegating the authentication part of interacting with FlexD to an external tool, uh, in this case, that Candid daemon, which can then integrate with any other authentication providers that you want. This means that FlexD itself doesn't need to really understand the concept of a user group, session, revoking access, all those kind of things. It, all it needs really is for the user to prove that they went through that authentication mechanism um, and that says that effectively includes a signed cookie of some kind, which then tells LexD what the user is and for how long that access is valid for. Now, if we go look uh, over at Candid itself, so it's another canonical project here on um, hosted on GitHub. So it's um, github.com slash canonical slash Candid. And it's usually installed through the Snap package uh, for the documentation. Um, it's all inside of their repository here. It uses a database to store its state. Uh, it can This can be MongoDB, Postgres, or some in-memory database. In the demo, we're going to be using Postgres. Then it can integrate with a, a number of uh, identity providers. So things like Ubuntu SSO, which is one we're going to be enabling because it's a very easy one to add. But it can do OpenStack Keystone. It can can do Azure OpenID Connect, can do the Active Directory Federated Services OpenID Connect, it can do Google OpenID Connect. It can use Keycloak to go to even more providers. Um, I've not looked recently at what Keycloak supports, but you could, I guess, use that to authenticate through, uh, I don't know, Twitter, Facebook, or whatever. Um, so really just about anything you want. And for a lot of people, the more important one, I guess, is going to be it supports LDAP. So if you've got an LDAP server of some kind, whether it's a standard Active Directory deployment or an open LDAP server or some, what is it, e directory from um, Nova uh, that you could also interact with. So if you've got an LDAP server with all your users and groups and everything, you can configure a candidate to interact with that. And there's also like a built-in static um, static one where you can just add some users directly into it. The end result to the user is that they can effectively add the LXD remote, but instead of being asked for something like a trust password to add their own certificates to that remote LXD, they will instead get redirected to a web page where they go through an authentication mechanism of some kind. And if that's successful, then the LXD remote ad will have succeeded and they can interact with the remote server. If um, if their session in Candid gets cancelled, then as soon as the um, authentication token itself expires, it won't be able to be renewed through Candid and the user's access will be revoked. Uh, usually we keep that setting pretty low so that after, say, 30 minutes or an hour of an account having been revoked, they can they no longer hold a valid token. So, um, that's kind of the basics. Let's switch over to Terminal and see how that looks like. Uh, so in this case, I'm dealing with uh, our small Raspberry Pi setup here. So I've got three Raspberry Pis going. Let me just increase the font a bit on those. Last one. 
Alrighty. So first thing first, I'm just going to be refreshing LexD as usual to the latest stable release. They're currently running the LTS. In this case, it doesn't really matter. The, the candidate-based candidate authentication mechanism has been supported for quite a while in LexD. So whether you're on 4.0 or even 3.0 or you're on current LexD, it doesn't really matter. It works the same way. Then once that's refreshed, we're going to be at creating a small LexD cluster. So I'm just going to be running LexD init on all of them. And there was one thing I wanted to check real quick is uh, see if I cancel this one. I just want to look at my network interfaces. Okay, so one thing is going to be important is that because we're going to be putting the authentication mechanism actually on LexD itself, um, Candid needs to be reachable from the connecting user as well as from the LexD server. So in this case, what I'm going to be using is that BR0 bridge I've got on each of them, which lets me run instances directly on the, the same network as the Raspberry Pi itself. So I'm going to be using that uh, to, to make sure that whatever container we run on there is going to be accessible from the outside. And so in this case, that I can reach the candid server from my desktop computer. All right. So clustering. Yes, actually, I should just do the first one. Uh, so let's do clustering. It is a new cluster. Raspberry Pi 1 is good. No need for a password. Local storage. Let's use ZFS, creating a pool. That's fine. Let's just use the defaults for that. Then it's going to come the question around, would you like to use an existing bridge or host interface? In this case, yes. I want to use BR0. And that should be the end of the questions. Yep. And then do a cluster add for r pi 2 and r pi 3 So that's going to get us the join token for both of those. At that point, you can do join an existing cluster. Do you have a token? Yes. And provide the token. And join. Next one, joining token. Oops. I used the wrong token. It would work better if I use that instances on token. Uh, and joining token, yes. And with that, we should be good to go. Yep, got a cluster. Just reset that. Got a cluster of three. Database is HA. Everything is fully operational. Yay. So now I'm going to be creating, uh, actually, let's do it, a stock Ubuntu 2004 container. Let's call that Candid. So I'm just going to pull the image for that and then create the container. Come on. There we go. And I mean, in this case, I'm running Candid itself on top of the cluster, which, you know, might, you might feel a bit of a chicken and egg problem there. Uh, yes, the container will technically need to be running so that you can interact with LexD itself, but you can always SSH to any of those LexD machines and interact, at that, interact from there, and it will work just fine. In larger deployments, it's probably a better idea to run something like Candid on the same machines or the same set of machines that run your the rest of your authentication and authorization stack. But in this case, that will work just fine. So now it's just doing the unpacking and we should have a container going. And First thing is going to be just give it a few seconds to get an IP address and make sure it is on on the right network that I can actually reach that from my machine. And then we'll be good. So that's probably going to take a few seconds. Okay, it's got IPv6 up. And IPv4, okay, that looks all good. So let's just go in there. And the first thing I'm going to be installing is uh, Postgres. So I said, uh, Candid. Candid is a snap, but it does need uh, a database. And you can use either the default in-memory database, which is a bit problematic because your sessions and mapping and all that stuff is going to go away whenever Candid itself is restarted. Or you can use an external database, in which case you get the choices between 
PostgreSQL or MongoDB. And I personally prefer Postgres, so I'm going to be using that in this case. And so just waiting for Postgres to finish installing. Then what we'll be doing is just creating a simple user and database for, for candidates use. Okay, so Postgres is installed and now I'm just gonna be using, so as the Postgres user, create user candid with a password. I'm just using candid for everything here because Postgres is not actually exposed to the network, so I don't really care about the credentials being trivial. All right, so I've got a user and a database that's owned by that user now. Next step is to actually install candid itself. So we do it like that. Give that a few seconds, and then we need to go and configure it. All right, so var snap candid current and config.yaml. In here, the location needs to include the IP address of the machine. So I'm going to go and get that. 172.17.32.51, so that's that. So it's just going to go in here. OK. The storage, we're not going to be using, oops. Okay, we're going to be turning off the memory, the in-memory storage and instead use Postgres. So uncomment the Postgres one and then replace user, password, and the database is correct already. So that's good. As far as authentication providers, uh, there's a default static one here with user one, password one, user two, password two. That will be fine for the demo. Don't keep that in production, it'd be a very bad idea. Additionally, I'm gonna add the Ubuntu SSO uh, provider because it's a very easy one to enable. The keys and everything were automatically generated at installation time, so you can keep them as they are, that's fine. Or you can you could regenerate new ones if you wanted. So with that done, just restart. So the snap restart candid. That should restart the daemon. Here we go. And it should be running at that point. So there's going to be one thing I need to grab, which is since Candid in this case is not running over HTTPS, we need to get its public key. And you can do that doing discharge info, I believe. Yeah, there we go. So that gives it its public key. And now when we can, we can go and configure LexD itself. So it's Candid dot uh, API dot I think. Actually, there should be that complete. There is. The API URL, and that's going to be the IP address, which I forgot already. Um, 172.17.32.51. Okay. 2.51. The port is 80.81. So that should be fine. And then, ended, and the key is the public key that was retrieved here. So just set that. Domains could be used so that if you've got multiple uh, authentication providers within Candid, you could say that LexD only does Ubuntu SSO and ignores the others. That can be useful if you've got different entries for the same LDAP server with different filters or something like that. So you can use domains, then choose exactly what you want. The expiry is a way to override the uh, default expiry for the um, Candid tokens effectively. So we'll just keep those as they are. And then switching on to my machine so I'll just do rpi and i need one of the ips for one of the raspberry pis oops it's the list let's do 172.17.30.44 and okay you probably can't quite see that let me copy paste the url into the browser and i'm gonna share that so that's what I'm looking at. And here I can do is say login with Ubuntu SSO, which then asks me for two factor authentication. So I'm just copying that second factor here, authenticate. That shares my email address, username, and full name with Candid. It says you're now logged in and close the window. 
And if I go back to my terminal, the remote was added. So I had to confirm the server certificate, but I did not have to provide a trust password or any of that. And I can access the remote server and list things perfectly normally. And because this is not using uh, TLS authentication, if I list the trust list, all I see are the three cluster certificates that are used, but there is no client certificate because I'm not authenticated as um, using client cert. And in fact, uh, what you can do is with the LexD monitor, you can look at, um, at events that then include the authentication details. So if I do monitor and I monitor the Raspberry Pi cluster, okay. And then we do something, say, get a shell inside the candid container. Oops, on our point, sorry. Oops, uh, there should actually be, no, it's not. All right, there we go. So this one does show the, the access details and we see that protocol for authentication is candid username is stgraver, which is what got picked up from the Ubuntu SSO login. So that shows that LexD knows just enough about who the user is that it can log and keep proper records for that, but without itself ever having to know about things like groups and, um, well, username, well, users and groups and how to connect to LDAP and how to do all of that kind of stuff. And that's, that's pretty much it for, if I look at, at authenticating to LexD using, um, using Candid. Anyone who can connect that way effectively gets the same privileges as if they were um, full admin on LexD. So Candid on, it, on its own doesn't let you do any kind of role-based access control, any of that. That is the section underneath that I will be covering in a different video. And that requires another another component to, to be able to do that kind of stuff. But Candid on its own lets you lets you restrict who can talk to LexD and in a corporate environment, especially where you've got existing directory services and all of that kind of stuff, it lets you not have to separately manage all of the keys and the, the trust store for, for who can access can access LexD. I hope this was useful to you. Um, if you've got any questions, you can leave them down in the comment section below, or you can go on our community forum and ask people there. I will be very happy to help you. And welcome to, to our videos in 2022. Uh, we took January off effectively um, by because we were quite busy doing a lot of other, other a lot of different things. So starting now in February and going into uh, the LexD 5.0 LTS. We're going to have more content, uh, hopefully, every week. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.